Yeah. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sylvia Liska. In the name of the Friends of the Secession, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the artist talk of Jean-Luc Mullen with a partner of his choice, the art historian and curator Corinne Disserens. Disserens? 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 <laughs> we were delighted that you have accepted our invitation. I would like to introduce Corinne with a small selection of her biographical data. Corinne de Serrance was born in Geneva, studied art history at the Sorbonne in Paris, and was a fellow at the Whitney Program in New York. From 89 to 93, she was curator at the IVAM in Valencia. In 96, she was appointed director of the Musée de Marseille and the Musée de Beaux-Arts in Nantes. It was, however, during her tenure as director of the newly built Museum of Modern Art in Bolzano, Bozen, that her name became famously associated, I'm sorry, it really did, with the censorship scandal of her installing Martin Kippenberger's crucified green frog for the opening exhibition. The controversy ultimately prompted Disseren to leave the museum. Until 2016, she was the director of the École de Recherche Graphique, an art academy in Brussels. Disseron curated retrospective and thematic exhibition and publishes extensively about work of artists as different as Oscar Schlemmer, Eva Hesse, Gordon Mather Clark, Trisha Brown, Dan Graham, Lydia Clark, Santo Mofokeng, Francis Alice, and many others. Corinne de Serrance has just turned from her, returned from her successful Taipei Biennale, which just ended now in February, and is presently on her way to Documenta in Athens for another project. With Jean-Luc Mullen, she has collaborated, among other encounters, in the context of the 25th San Paolo Biennale. To Jean-Luc Mullen, just some cornerstones for his biography the introduction proper and profound, I will leave up to Corinne. Jean-Luc Mullen was born in 1955 in Reims. He studied philosophy, literature, and art plastique uh, in Paris, where he lives and works until today. His biography of exhibitions and publications in the period of more than 30 years is extremely prolific. His most recent one, with an extensive cat catalogue, was at the Centre Pompidou. His work is represented internationally by the galleries, pay attention, Chantal Cruzel in Paris, Thomas Dane in London, Greta Mert in Brussels, Thierry de Ciné, saint Fal in Mexico, and finally Miguel Abreu in New York. After this conversation, which should take about 50 minutes, I would like to invite everyone here uh, to remain for the opening of the exhibitions of Jean-Luc Milen, Anouka Farouki, and Rosa Barber at 7 p.m. I ask you to please collaborate or just let our technicians remove the chairs and the sound system uh, promptly after this conversation so that we can see the exhibition proper. Uh, I'm looking forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvie. Well, good we evening. Have to begin. <laughs> good evening, yes. Very nice to see you here. And I'm very happy to be in this particular place. And uh, I will start maybe with what uh, surrounds us, as we have been catch for this talk in one part of a nut. So, uh, very simply, why don't we start from the nut, which has been occupying you for quite Science a time. Too long. Yeah. Well, a few years. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what is a nut? Generally, people imagine that a nut is a, something that needs to be tie, uh, tied, or uh, um, au contraire, uh, Un untied. <laughs> Uh, and it's associated in interpretations with uh, difficulties. 
generally difficulties of, st of stomach, uh, difficulty of thinking, something wrong. So we say we have a knot. Uh, I know that this kind of a cliché pre preconception uh, makes the, the, the interpretation of uh, the knot as I'm doing them here. Uh, but uh, in my case, in, especially in this space, uh, you can see that it's not a marine or a, or a psychic knot. Because, uh, have you, like you have seen, the, the, the line uh, of the knot is continuous and closed. So it's a continuous loop. It's, not, it's a figure, if you want. Uh, it's, and the, for the easier to understand the, 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 the zero, the first knot is just a circle, but a circle in space. So let's say that the, the, in, in mathematics and physics, the knot is a tool to investigate and describe complexity and chaos. Uh, what's chaos? Of course, it's not the black block. You can easily imagine a river, for example, going through the mountain and a uh, lot of stones and the movement of water goes uh, in, in apparently a total disorder. And we have, uh, uh, historically, we are, we are used to oppose order to disorder. Of course, disorder don't exist. Disorder is just a kind, a possibility of order. That's why I always say that uh, there is more and less order. There is not an order against another one. It's more and less order. And to describe this phenomenon of uh, melting water, flooding everywhere, jumping, etc., uh, the easiest, and, the, and it's functional like this, is to use these uh, series of knots that are classified in depending of the numbers of cross they do. And finally, uh, not only it's a, it's a tool uh, at, uh, to describe at the moment, but uh, as the knots are classified with diverse numbers corresponding, so in, uh, of the numbers of crosses, numbers of uh, cables, if you want, because a knot is like a cable in the air, uh, you can make an uh, operation. So, not only you can describe, but you can build complexity. Uh, in this case, uh, this knot is uh, the five-point wine. It's, uh, it means that you have uh, five crosses, and the crosses go up and down. Each time they cross, they go like uh, sewing, the mm -hmm. sewing, right? and uh, so this one is a five cross, and it's one possibility with five crosses. There is another one, and this knot is called five point two. Uh, of course, it's a pure uh, abstract existence because a knot is something that you can expand, that you can contract, that eventually that you can, come on here. Uh, Move. So, uh, let's take. If you take a, 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 a rubber uh, ring, it's just a circle. But if you put it, it seems complex. But finally, without cutting it, if you move parts by parts, finally, you came to the circle. And in topology, uh, the, the the knot have not changed. It's the same. Sorry. Better make a, a little drawing. So, we have this one, for example. If you move each part continuously, eh, of course, you're going to have something 
at the end, totally impossible to read. But you can, if you move again each part without cutting, you come back to a circle. And this one is totally different, for example, for the, from this one. Well, this is going up, this is going up, this is going up. And this one is well known. This one is a trefoil. And you can continue like this with four, five, six crosses. And it's absolutely infinite. And actually, we don't know how much we can think. Uh, in that case of this one, I, so this is a 3.1, this is a 0 0.1, and the, the 5 came like this. Dessous, dessus, go down, up, down, up. So you can see that continuously, it's go around. This is the 5.1. There is another solution that I don't remember how it's done exactly. It's something like this. It goes inside. Un, deux, trois, quatre. No, this is one, un, deux, this is a four. Hmm. Well, etc. But and you can build, of course, you can add this one to this one and you go to seven. Why it's interesting? Not only because it describes the, 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 it's a tool. So if we were in philosophy, we would call that a concept. Uh, but your knot here is extremely loose. No, not, not, it, it's loose, but... But because it goes to the maximum of voilà. its possibility with voilà. a given space, right? That's what, exactly what so I So mean. in one way, it's kind of different of the knots I have known in, mm. in your work. And I would just elaborate mm -hmm. a little more. I have the impression, and maybe I'm wrong, that it's almost if you needed to push, you know, the knot to the extremity of this voilà. architecture in reaction to Another show you just had at Saint Pompidou, where uh, there was a lot of uh, objects mm -hmm. that were extremely complex in their concentration mm -hmm. and cohabitation and mass mm -hmm. negotiation, I would mm -hmm. say. So here, I, when I entered yesterday, I had the impression that you needed to uh, undo something. Absolutely. But, yes, I need to undo the, the, the weight, I would say, of the institution. The weight of the production. The weight of fighting for money, etc. And this is so heavy that finally uh, it could take off the pleasure of doing things. So, I don't want to do that again. Uh, and I decided to, go, to do something totally different uh, and something important, for example. We even didn't uh, use all the budget. So we are under the budget, and that's important, for example. We did light. Because it's just work, finally. And just work is something strong. Uh, but uh, this question of space, let's come back at the question of space. If the cessation comes like this, why not? Could, we could have this knot around, because the knot is absolutely expandable. We could have the knot outside, we could push the knot on the buildings around. So because it's a, it's a pure abstraction, uh, there is no size. But if the cessation comes with the dome, somewhere like this, you can see that we can move that all around the space. 
and that's what we did. We did, I expand the knot to the maximum volume, not space, maximum volume existing in this room. Why? Because the, the idea of space in our the occidental tradition is driven by the, by the architects. Space, finally, it was between the walls. If you want a lot of space, you put the, the walls quite far. And this makes a problem, finally, because walls, especially in our, con in our political context, uh, are problematic. So, I would say that the space, not the volume, the space here is a kind of master space. And that the knot that produced something totally different is, is the slave, it's subservient, in English I think, of the master space. So, that's why there is a kind of a huge contradiction between uh, what the not develop in terms of thinking and uh, in terms of uh, uh, space and what the tradition of architecture do. And it's really simple. Architecture has always something inside, something outside. And what's inter what is interesting in, the, in a knot is that no inside, no outside. And imagine a space with no inside, no outside, linked to complexity and to the analysis of complexity. Um, come on here. So you go into politics here? Of course. It's a cessation. And, and, and it's still a name available. We can cessation the cessation. That's not the idea, of course. We have to quote the, the big artist that, that did shows here. But the idea is, of course, is the name of the place is part of the show. And it's fantastic when you see the, the workers with the name cessation when they, when they move in the city. It's, it's like a, a really cr political critic. Well, that's part of the, of the game, of course. Uh, and I, as I told, the, the, the knot can be liberate. The master cannot liberate. Mm -hmm. They just try to continue. And, and there is air. And of course, so it means... That air, and when uh, this morning you presented the show, the first things you spoke, one, if I'm not wrong, mm -hmm. one, uh, there was the question, why did you needed to put certain objects? Mm -hmm. You uh, f started with the flag. With, uh, yes, you know, the flag uh, as bringing first uh, visibility to air, but then very quickly for me, it immediately bring me back to the book. Hmm? To the book, which is at the beginning, uh, when at you enter, entrance. and uh, uh, there is one of the images, it's uh, the uh, manifestation with the uh, Lebanese flag, with the, I don't know in English, le cèdre. Le cedar. Cedars. Huh? And uh, so you, you, have, you have this flag there with the shirt, the white shirt and the metal black uh, thing. And uh, you dealt with this notion you have of trying to internationalizing mm -hmm. the national flag. Can you say something uh, about that? Yes. Um, there is a, uh, an articulation missing, so no problem. Uh, so in this fight between the, the master space and the slave space, uh, the concrete uh, walls are not able to have a, an image because the walls belong both to the knot and to the building. Mm. So the walls become really ambiguous. Uh, I would say that finally, if there is scul a sculpture in this space, it's precisely not the knot, but what circulates around the knot. And what is circulating? Evidently, first, air. 
and how to show that air. And not only air, there is uh, light, what some is? draft. Uh, so that's why I work on, first on this idea of the flag, because the flag is the best way to, to see the, wa the, the wind and the air. But as you know, the, fly, the, the wind is not always going in the same direction. So that's why I did this piece that's behind. And this piece behind, uh, the first I did uh, as a study was the black flag with just behind the national French flag. Same size, same material, but this, imp this is impossible to export. I could have done it with the Aust Austrian uh, flag. But I was not satisfied, uh, and I'm still not satisfied uh, with any idea of nation. I trust people, not, not nations. And uh, so I tried to internationalize these two flags. And I turn in my head all the countries I know, even the, you speak, we're speaking about Libanese. Uh, well, and I was not satisfied with, uh, so I tried to find which could be the, the minimum flag, finally. And the minimum flag is when you have nothing, finally, is your shirt. To say hello, to say goodbye, or to say peace. And so, I build this piece with my with a white shirt. Comment uh, dire? Solidifié. Solidify. And the other one, black, uh, almost solid too. And it become black and white. So kind of opposition. But the material is not the same. In the, in the flag I imagine, uh, there is a, the absence of a body, but the possibility of a body. In the black one, there is no more bodies. It's just uh, symbols, uh, signs. Signs that we, that we use too in the, in the construction of the knot, huh? because the black and the yellow is the maximum contrast you can get with uh, colors. And uh, it's the maximum uh, re readable uh, that you can do. Right on Helvetica, yellow on black background is the maximum effect you can have. So and there is the flag concerning, of course, the, the, the wind. Uh, there is too the piece called Hermes on this corner with a white uh, bed shirt and uh, Oh, it's called French uh, pillow. Yeah. French pillow, yeah. and it functions like a, like, a, like a very classic background and figure, volume and flat. Uh, it's a, a couple of uh, of opposition, very simple. And you know, if we do the, the contrary, if you put the pillow down and the sh the sh shirt up. It's like when you were young and you, you were hiding yourself to escape the parents. So make a fake uh, body, finally. But of course, in air, it's not the only thing with the wind. We have light. That's why I did this piece uh, where the light... But before uh, we go to light, I would like just to hmm? have one more question about this very precise uh, situation of this book, this flag, and then, you know, the other. Because the book is quite uh, something. Mm -hmm. When you start to look at it, it's, uh, it speaks of the question of uh, nations, mm -hmm. it speaks of the no no representation, political mm -hmm. representation. I, I, I just discovered it. Uh, today, huh? I haven't studied it, uh, but my first uh, reaction, but it also, uh, it's quite uh, uh, playful and at the same time slightly violent with the question of... Uh, quite serious, uh, finally. Yeah, uh, but it, 
I mean, we switch, huh? we are in a tension. And, uh, and in the book, you use uh, uh, the big... Ball paint. Hmm? Ball point. Ball point, but big, big. right? And, uh, and uh, I, for people who don't know, Jean-Luc Moulin has been working a lot with the colors and the uh, ink of the Bix, producing paintings, uh, producing different, in fact, different things, uh, painting objects, objects with uh, mm. those uh, un unstable colors. Mm -hmm. When I saw some objects that you work with the Bix uh, painting, the color had modified quite strongly. So, uh, looking at this image that you have modified, you have uh, retouched mm -hmm. with the beak, and in relation to what you have put in configuration, and I immediately saw entering, you know, the book of uh, about uh, labor, mm -hmm. the code of labor, red. Mm -hmm the disjunction object with uh, the uh, ultramarine, the blue chair, and the fosse, uh, the, the fosse, it's called la fossille. I don't know in English. Sick, uh, je crois. Sickle. Uh, Sickle. So you have this red, this blue, uh, the yellow, evidently. So in one way, we are inscri you inscribe us in a kind of genealogy of relationship to uh, those colors. Color. And, and the flag is the element which is black and white, and then we can arrive to this delight mm -hmm. uh, of this uh, granite that you have mm -hmm. lighted very strongly, mm -hmm. that is a black granite, mm -hmm. right? And uh, uh, because it's light uh, in such a way that in one way it becomes very deep uh, uh, matter. It right? seems that it goes in the material. Uh, mm. the, color, the, the light goes in inside the, 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 the granite. If we cut the light, you, you can see that it's as black as the, as the bitume. But if you put intense light, you have the feeling that the, the light is in entering the, the material. And, but the, this material is what we can find the oldest. It's before man. It came from uh, the birth of the Earth. So this, this light finally uh, introduces us in a kind of a thickness of, the, of time. A geological uh, kind, kind of geological, uh, but you're right uh, uh, about colors uh, because, of course, as all the artists, I love colors, and uh, but actually, I uh, try not to use uh, the color uh, from just feeling because I love it. It's not sufficient, and I did a lot of work with big. Uh, just be because these four colors are used everywhere in the world. You can see the same uh, red in Asia, in, uh, in South America. So these colors nowadays are not more uh, colors. They are quite cliché. And uh, as everybody uses it, uh, we know that we write in black and blue, but we correct in red. We uh, underline uh, in, in green, so these colors uh, are linked to um, not only to are linked to action, are linked to reading, are linked to expressing everywhere in the world. So it's not used like a, like a painter. The same, this yellow is the stabilo bus uh, you use at the office. Huh? The same exactly. Uh, and nowadays, uh, and you, you were speaking of the ultramarine there, ultramarine for me, it's, uh, it's not a color, it's a chemia. Mm. And depending if how you cook it, uh, you can have blue, uh, pink, violet, depending on the level of the... So in this piece there, uh, the, the, the color is, 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 finally, is finally a time of cooking. And you know, there is a close relation between art and cooking. Bon, passons. 
the but same for the. It's it's empty. This chair this very strongly empty. Yes. You know? uh, and it's uh, uh, in the opposite of the, uh, of code, the red of one. code of and labor. And the same, the code of labor in, is red. In, in red, right? And uh, at the same time, it's uh, I speak of this absence of body, of uh, uh, instrument of labor, but which is, has also an uh, entire other history uh -huh. with. Uh, uh, the notion of death. Uh, uh, so this absence of body, this but in waiting of the history and the legacy of labor, and uh, it's a disjunction. Or is manier. it a disjunction right. in a way? So you started disjunction. But I just want to say we, you you started disjunction in 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 photography mm -hmm. in image, right? And uh, now you are very strongly involved with disjunction mm -hmm. in the way you uh, put things together and you look at their ages mm -hmm. uh, uh, in object and not mm -hmm. in image. But you, you, you did uh, uh, image with uh, uh, La Faucille, mm -hmm. with Steve Paxton, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I found it very interesting you know, this absence of body, thinking your disjunction, how you work, this image of Steve Paxton. Steve Paxton has been uh, a person who has constantly questioned the gesture of labor, the relationship to, to the uh, artificial space na and, and nature. And so can you uh, say something about this you know, work? I was telling that finally what's between the, the master space and the, and the knot is air. But air allows you to put in contact things that have no reason to be in contact. Uh, I, I could, uh, you all know, of course, uh, Mona Lisa. And if you look, not the figure, but the landscape around the Mona Lisa, you can see that on the right, the landscapes go up on the mountain, and on the left, the landscape go down. But in between, there is the figure, better, because otherwise it's a huge uh, broke, because one part of the landscape can go up, the other down. And this is possible to produce, enfin, it produces a complete image, because through the sky, that is empty mm -hmm. air, you can make the passage. And you can link through uh, something totally immaterial, things totally material. And in the case of the chair, uh, of course, a chair evokes the absence of someone. And it could uh, attract you to sit. And the, the sick, the same, is built on the um, dimensions of body. And it's really a precise building to, 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 to be able to cut uh, efficacy, uh, the manner efficacy, efficient. So uh, th that's interesting because finally these two absent bodies have a contact through the dimensions that are used. And it's visible that the, the arm of the chair have, have the end of the sick, just in the same level. And finally, there is again an ambiguity. An ambiguity. ambiguity. But possible through the void. But we have a very strong uh, element, an object there, with his arms uh, hanging. Uh, it's it's a kind of a potence. Uh, again, mm -hmm. I need a, no a, a potence uh, where we hang. Uh, yeah, a gallow. Uh, on va, on va uh, so we have a kind of a gallow with a arm, with a leaf and a hand uh, hanging there, which uh, you use. Uh, you mixed this terra verde and this. Other Cinabra. Cina Cinabra, right? But they are kind of awkward, huh? what they provoke as a color. We are not, I mean, in the Terra Verde of 
the dead body representing the dead, uh, the dead color of, mm -hmm. of dead bodies, yeah. uh, body. But then you bring life with this other color. <coughs> You're right. Uh, and uh, again, it's a quote of a classical, classical painting. Uh, if you read the, the, the classic uh, cooking techniques of painting, from Cennino Cennini, for example, you have uh, re the recette. Recipes. The recette. And he explained that if you want to paint a body living, of course it's an image, you have to go from the back, the, the, the first layer is white plaster and uh, skin glue that do something close to bones. So, the first layer of a painting is bones. On these bones, you paint, you draw, they draw. <laughs> you put terra verde, and terra verde produces this kind of a livid body and you put over life through first layer cinnabar, later you put ver uh, vermillon, uh, some uh, garance, and you finish by the, um, I would say, by makeup, the varnish. And these layers, uh, it's really interesting to understand that. It means that the artist is not, it's someone who try to introduce life uh, where it's not. But where it's not, you have to paint it first. In, in, in Rembrandt, there are some things really interesting like this. Imagine that uh, you see a Rembrandt, you should light it like this, because in the dark parts, everything is painted. It just puts shadows, more shadows, layers by layers. But everything is painted under the... Uh, the shadow is inhabited. And this uh, inhabited shadow is like the, the void, finally. You, you, it's a, a way to put things together through the shadows. And you have the makeup and the blood. Of course. In the, uh, in the olive oil vinegar bottle. That's almost simple. Yes. <laughs> wow. But? It's, it's a way to, to show very simply... Uh, it, it is a little simple. So but you know, it's, it's always difficult to, to reach something sim simple needs a lot of work, of course. Especially when we begin by question of complexity. Uh, how I came to... I think I came to that through the retouch of the book. Mm. Because the book finally functions like a livret at the opera. It's like the text that is sung. Is it a livret? Libretto. Libretto. It's not, the, the, it's not a program. It's not uh, a catalog, of course. It's more like the libretto of this uh, space and of this show. And of course, when you read the news, every morning it's bloody. Every morning, it's bloody and makeup because they have to sell. So I said, okay, we have, uh, there is a moment you have to show that. And I remember this uh, oil and olive that nobody uses it now, I, see, I think. Uh, Gandoufle in French. It's, uh, and uh, I found one, and we fill it with uh, blood and, uh, and makeup. As I was explaining uh, to, to a young, very young uh, child, uh, it's simple. The makeup is there, blood is inside. But you're young, and when you're young, it's terrific. How can we put blood outside? Why not make the contrary? Shot makeup and makeup with, uh, with blood. And that's almost what happened in every morning on the news. You have this mix of commercials and uh, information. And the information is always linked to, vi no, let's say, for an event to become an information, you have to have uh, one of these three parameters, history, laws, force. If there is no 
false law or history mm -hmm. is not an information. For example, a bird crossing the sky is not in the news. But if the bird hit the plane and there is a catastrophe, this is an information. So it means that in the newspapers we have almost nothing. There is a lot of more events possible than those who are uh, habitué, uh, uh, custom to. Yeah. And uh, of course, I'm interested more in events. What's possible to? What is? What can happen? What can so happen? So how how do you approach this space of the news, the newspaper, as you have been producing newspaper? Right. You're right, because we begin by that <laughs> together. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, it's, it's something simple. Um, I remember uh, all the first images I've seen, uh, I don't see these images in museum. I've seen it in the, in the papers, in books. Uh, and so the, the quality of print, of paper, I really like it. The fact that it's daily, you can have a uh, quotidien, it's daily. Uh, so I was really interested and, and I, I really appreciate the, the, the texture, the, the, the touch, I would say, the, of the news, the sound of the newspaper. And of course, I've always my pen. So you are in, the, you are in flight, you are in the metro, in the bus, and, and suddenly you see a absolutely stupid image. So that's how I begin. I begin by stupidities. Moustache, uh, lipstick, uh, uh, points, uh, all kind of stupidities that make the image different. But doing that, uh, I saw that the, the, uh, the, the print of the news are made with four colors. And I was wearing my big with four colors. So it became quite evident to mix the quadrichromy with the four colors. And I began by dots. And you can see, you know, a, the first one in the book is black and white, sorry. Uh, it's kind of tear, but so small that the dots, the points of the, of the grid of printing uh, make the eyes of the, of the animal. And the, how do you the, the spots, the spots of, the, of the leopard uh, are made of dots, too. So I begin to understand that finally these dots were, in a certain way, making the image, but leaving space in between in which I could intervene. Uh, and, for example, this question of dots or pixels or uh, individuals, finally, uh, it's the, the, this piece with the, the, particles. Uh, the buttons, the particles. Café. Uh, Café button. and buttons of different colors. But again, on the floor, you can see like three colors. It's almost a flag, too. Or a kind of territory, landscape. And it's easy to see. If you, there is no border in that piece. You just approach dots, and they mix. And I'm sure that at the end of the show, uh, the cafe will be mixed totally with the white buttons and the, the others. This is going to move. But they, are, they have the right to move. Migrants have borders. So that's how I'm, I function. It's not allegorical, it's not metaphorical. I just try to find objective and concrete uh, solutions uh, to problems we face. We have signs that we have to kind of wrap it, but I think we should ask Give if the, there is yes. questions because we are being waved, that time is running. Um, ah, yeah. Yeah?
is this a, a symbol for, for life? Because it's also sort of in the center. Um, or is it that the body in itself is 70% water? So it takes Beautiful. in the vibration of everything around us? Or how did you see that? I like your, inter your interpretation. I didn't think, think it. Uh, no, again, it's a very material process. Uh, because this battle, as you've seen, is not a battle existing. We never see this battle in a, in a shop. Uh, this bottle is a one liter and a half classic plastic bottle that have been reduced but with slow fire. And uh, so it means that uh, I leave some uh, the good, really little water inside, close it, close the bottle, the big one, huh? and uh, if you approach it to the fire, open fire, uh, as in countryside, uh, the, the, the air inside uh, with the water heat and expand, maintaining globally the form of the bottle. Meanwhile, the fire is melting the, 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 the plastic, and this reduces. And it's, if you want, it's the exact contrary of the production of the bottles. Because the bottle uh, is very few plastic, and they inject air, and the air in the mold make the form. And so I, I did exactly the contrary, reducing at slow fire. And of course, just to have it in, uh, on equilibrium, in equilibrium, I put half water, and it's all question of transparency, and I, and I put a fake, of course, a diamond as a... Stop. And so, it's not, for me, it's not a symbol. I don't use symbols, because symbols always begun I like cliches. Is it your way to retouch object? In a set Going of, through yeah, yeah, deconstructing, no, no, right. deconstructing the production? Deconstructing production is a way to read the object. Otherwise, we just see a bottle. But no one imagine how it's produced and how it's produced, make the worker came in. <laughs> and if the, the labor is visible, you, can't, you don't sell, because labor is always suffering. And you cannot sell if there is suffering visible. That's why the design exists. Design is always there to hide the difficulty of work. And in this room, and uh, I'm profit that, uh, that I'm here speaking uh, uh, to thanks the team with whom we did this knot, because it's not only uh, we did it together. And I understood that they were understanding what they were doing, and finally we did, we did it, I, I hope, and I, I think yes, with a lot of joy. So we can work together without destroying us. So that's something happening. That's something you cannot uh, write down before it happens. En effet, the days which were filling the building of this exhibition were very joyful. Mm. Uh, the collaboration you had with the colleagues of the succession was very special. And um, I think during the opening of the exhibition, if there are more questions, Jean-Luc will be happy to answer them. I thank you very, very much mm -hmm. for your time and for your attention. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> Let's shake it. Bon. Hey, good time. <laughs>